how you've been pulled back from this precipice of murder. It's not about policing, because you would have to put a policeman or woman in every home 24-7. It is about the whole experience of our children. It is about school, it is about church. It's about teaching our children from very young about communicating with each other, about coping with anger, about navigating relationships. Unfortunately, emotional competence or emotional education is not something we teach in our schools currently, but I'm here to say, not yet. But in the coming school year, we're going to put our efforts into teaching character education because we know that education is not only about preparing for a labor market, but also about character development and social participation. It is about transforming Jamaica into a developed society with citizens having stable personality traits that allow us to interact with each other without primal violence. For the upcoming school year, we will be rolling out civics as a discrete subject. The final curriculum is ready. We need more than competence in maths and reading and writing. We need to teach our children the values and virtues that will enable them to navigate their way in any circumstance in which they find themselves without resorting to violence. I know that nothing I say today will bring back Tanisha and her four children, but my hope is that this emphasis on character education and civic in our school will help to turn a new leaf in the minds and hearts of those who believe violence is the only way to solve problems. Ms. Gwen, God is not sleeping. May Tanisha and her children rise to meet God on that judgment day. Rest in peace. We will continue to pray for you. Thank you. of mediation but the victims are still hurting and that hurt sometimes gets transformed into revenge so the state has to be far more active than it is now in ensuring that we give support to the victims of murder the victims of crimes the victims of abuse. The second thing that we have to do is to have a system of early detection, early intervention, and early warning. What do I mean by that? In this instant case, the perpetrator came to the attention 
of law enforcement before this. There was no follow-up intervention to determine whether or not this person would commit an act in the future. But that is just how our system is. But we have to change that. So right now, we will have to develop a new way of identifying violent perpetrators in our society and getting them into programs much earlier. Because the truth is, if when this young man who is accused of this act came to the attention of law enforcement before, even if a case was not brought before the court, that young man should have been given serious intervention, serious counseling and follow-up to ensure that he's not harboring evil intent throughout his life. And there are many young people in Jamaica like that who have experienced violence, who have used violence themselves, or they have been the victims directly of violence. And they don't know how to treat with it other than to hold it in themselves, hold it in their hearts until an event occurs or an opportunity presents themselves again. And then they end up becoming the perpetrators of violence on someone else. So aside from the legislation which we are doing, we are devising a new program and system of intervention to ensure that especially our young people are not bottling up the violence, waiting for it to explode sometime down the road to create this cycle of violence. So, friends, family, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to offer my condolences to the family. I went and I paid my condolences personally. I decided to sit through the entire proceeding to listen to what all the speakers have said, to look at your faces and observe and hear your comments, to get a sense as to how the community is coming to grips. I think the funeral is important in putting closure to the issue. But I am not quite convinced that we have learned the lessons that we need to learn about violence. I'm not convinced. And I'm saying it here for all of you who are listening, that the government will act in a decisive way to change the structure of our legal system and to give greater attention. But ultimately, it comes down to our heart. What do we believe in our heart? Are we willing to forgive? Are we willing not to use violence? Are we willing to seek peace and not escalate simple situations into conflict? It depends on what we do. So as we celebrate our freedom, a hundred and, uh, what is it, 24, no, 138 years ago, what are we going to do with it? Are we going to use our freedom to do anything we choose, to kill our loved ones, to be violent in how we react and interact with each other? Or are we going to use our freedom to create the peaceful, loving, gentle, caring society that we all wish for Jamaica? Ladies and gentlemen, I love you. I care about you. I want to see the best for you. So as we lay 
these five souls to rest. Let us all commit 